The palatal anterior superior alveolar nerve block is an easily administered injection that allows the operator to achieve bilateral anesthesia of the maxillary incisors and canines from a single palatal injection. The PASA is an excellent alternative to administering multiple buccal infiltrations in a highly sensitive premaxillary region of the mouth when you need to achieve pulpal anesthesia to the six anterior teeth. Let's discuss how to begin. Injection technique, PASA, or palatal approach, anterior superior alveolar nerve block. Before you begin, verify the STA system is set to the STA mode. It is recommended that you use the 30 gauge half inch bonded SDA1 handpiece for this injection. Please note it is critical to use the SDA mode for this injection to ensure that a safe and controlled single flow rate is maintained throughout this injection. Delivering the anesthetic at a faster rate than the control flow rate can result in adverse tissue reactions and or tissue damage. Make certain the aspiration feature is on as an aspiration test may be performed during the anesthetic delivery. Site of injection. This injection is initiated just lateral to the incisive papilla along the incisive groove while targeting the underlying nasal palatine canal. The objective is to gain entrance into the canal and maintain contact with the inner surface of the bony wall of the incisive canal. Start the PASA injection by using the pre-puncture technique. Gently place the bevel of the needle against the surface of the incisive groove. Step 2. Stabilize the needle by applying pressure from a cotton applicator. It's best to use a wooden handle cotton applicator so that adequate pressure can be applied. The applicator absorbs any excess anesthetic solution and makes for a more comfortable needle entry. Step 3. You will now initiate cruise control by depressing the foot pedal and counting three audible beeps. After the third beep, the SDA system will announce the word cruise. Upon hearing this announcement, remove your foot from the top of the foot control pedal. You will find that the SDA system will continue to beep, indicating anesthetic solution is continuing to flow. The technique of allowing anesthetic to contact and diffuse through the outer layers of tissues produces a topical anesthetic effect, numbing the surface. Do not allow the needle to puncture the tissue at this time. Continue to allow the needle to stay on the surface for another four beeps before initiating needle penetration. Step four, rotate the handpiece back and forth with a slight forward movement to allow a shallow puncturing of the tissue to a depth of one to two millimeters. Then stop forward movement to allow the STA system to continue to deposit anesthetic for an additional four beeps before any further penetration of the tissue. Step 5. Continue to very slowly penetrate the palatal tissue with a gentle back and forth movement while simultaneously advancing another 1 to 2 millimeters before pausing once again. It should take anywhere between 8 to 12 seconds to reach bone depending on the thickness of the palatal tissue. Step 6. Maintain the needle bevel against the surface of bone once it's contacted. You should begin to notice distinct blanching of the palatal tissue as an effect of the vasoconstrictor in the local anesthetic. This is normal and to be expected. Once the needle is within the nasopalatine canal and contacting the inner bony wall, perform an aspiration test. Aspiration is performed as follows. Depress and release the foot pedal and observe if any blood appears in the hub or tubing. If not, this is a negative aspiration and you may then continue the injection by reinitiating the cruise control. If there was a positive aspiration, as determined by observing blood in the hub or tubing, reposition the needle and then re-aspirate before continuing. After you have delivered the proper amount of anesthetic, you will notice diffuse blanching of the tissue. Once a suggested volume of anesthetic solution is dispensed, the needle will be removed. To avoid anesthetic spray back during needle removal, use the following needle removal technique. While the needle is still embedded in patient tissues, Depress and release the foot control pedal. Count three beeps after releasing the foot control and then totally remove the needle from within the patient's mouth. Direct the needle away from the patient as a small amount of anesthetic solution may still be present. We will now show a clinical example of the PASA injection being performed. You can see the needle is applied to the surface of the palate, followed by the placement of a cotton applicator. 
the flow of anesthetic is begun by initiating the STA cruise control. Once the needle bevel enters the tissue, pause forward movement for an additional four to five beeps before advancing again. Next, simultaneously advance the needle one to two millimeters while rotating back and forth. After the papilla has blanched, reorientate the needle more vertically to gain entrance to the nasopalatine canal and continue to advance the needle very slowly while simultaneously rotating with bidirectional rotation. Advance the needle within the incisive canal 5 to 8 millimeters. All movements must be performed very slowly and gently. Do not move the needle more than 1 to 2 millimeters forward each time. Rapid movements are contraindicated. When the needle is in the canal and contacting the inner bony wall, stop movement and aspirate by depressing and releasing the foot control pedal. Do not exceed three quarters of the needle length penetration into the canal. If aspiration is negative, maintain position and deliver the proper amount of anesthetic. As the anesthetic solution is delivered, you'll notice distinct blanching of the tissue. To avoid anesthetic spray back during needle removal, use the following removal technique. While the needle is still embedded in the patient's tissue, depress and release the foot control pedal. Count three beeps after releasing the foot control and then totally remove the needle from within the patient's mouth. Direct the needle away from the patient as a small amount of anesthetic solution may still be present. It is the sole responsibility of each practitioner to identify, select, and administer the proper drug and volume for a given patient. The following information serves as a suggestion, not meant as definitive guidelines for any specific patient. The suggested drug and volume for the PASA injection is 2% xylocaine HCL, one part per 100,000 epinephrine. A drug volume of 0.9 millimeters to 1.4 millimeters, which is equivalent to three quarters to one full cartridge, is a suggested volume when performing the PASA injection. If you elect to use a 4% concentrated local anesthetic drug, such as 4% articaine HCL, use half the dosage previously suggested and use caution when using these medications. Please refer to an appropriate textbook reference source for guidance and recommendation pertaining to local anesthetic solutions and specific volumes. The PASA injection is very useful for those dental procedures performed in the maxilla. It effectively provides profound soft tissue and pulpal anesthesia of multiple maxillary teeth from a single injection without producing collateral anesthesia to the lips and face thus allowing greater post-treatment comfort. Additionally, those procedures that require a more accurate assessment of the patient's smile line during treatment, such as aesthetic restorative dentistry, can be accomplished with its maxillary injection with no drooping lip.